One of the best, the very best investigative reporters working today is Matt Taibbi. He's, he's writing principally for the Rolling Stone magazine, rollingstone.com, the website, his most recent piece, Wall Street's War. Matt Taibbi, welcome back to the program. Oh, hi. Your recent piece, The Wall Street's War here for, for Rolling Stone magazine, uh, you point out that the companies, the, the companies with the most risk in financial reform have, have basically mobilized an army. Who are these companies? What's their army look like? Well, the, the, the biggest, the people with the most at stake in uh, in this bill are obviously the the biggest banks. Uh, you know, it's Wall Street. It's the you know the the names everybody's familiar with: Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup. Um, you know, all well, all the hard. banks really. Mo- yeah, exactly. They 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 there was a, a huge amount of um, a lobbyist. Uh, it went back in a month and a half ago when I wrote that piece, and then now this week, as it's going to be passed today, you know they they really worked hard during the conference process to to try to you know whittle down the bill as much as possible. And I, I you know from their point of view, I think they've done a pretty good job of getting it to the point where there's really not much left in the bill that has a lot of teeth. Yeah, and, and I'd like to go through that step by step with you, if that's okay. You you point out in your article that uh, one lobbyist actually complained that this bill was being openly debated. He he wanted to go back to the smoke-filled rooms. Yeah, yeah. There was well, you know, the normal way this works is that um, you know there. Both sides come out, and you know it's sort of like a poker game. You know, you, you, the, you know the the ruling party will come out with a with a sort of a high card. You know, they'll 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 try to push through a bunch of reforms, and then uh, you know as the process drags out, you know they kind of take they take all this stuff into the back room, and they you know they chip away at it until there's not a whole lot left. So what was happening, you know, with this bill was that. Um, during the the time when they would normally be whittling the bill down, there were suddenly uh, you know a number of scandals involving Wall Street, including that big case in, with Goldman Sachs, uh, and suddenly it became politically very unpopular to be in bed with Wall Street, and they weren't getting a lot of progress in in killing the really really dangerous parts of this bill, uh, and so there was a lot of frustration by the lobbyists. They were they they were openly saying, you know, this thing is being done out in the open, as opposed to the you know in the back room where it's supposed to be. Uh, but in the end, they did finally get um, you know the bill back into the back room where they where it needed to be. Which is them. which is the conference committee where the House bill and the House right. version of the Senate bill are re- reconciled. And let's just go through some of the details of this so-called financial services reform. I think this is uh, just as much of a Trojan horse as the health care reform. Frankly, um, auditing the Fed. Front number one, auditing the Fed. Well, you know, in the it, it started out, of course, you know, the the, the Federal Reserve Act basically prohibited uh, the Congress from having any real oversight of the Fed's books, which meant You're talking that the Act re- back in 1913. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Then you know there was really no way for Congress to to look and to see how much uh, you know the, the Fed was spending to bail out Wall Street, um, especially in the last couple of years. And so there was originally a proposal by you know, Ron Paul and Alan Grayson in the House that would have been a very sweeping uh, kind of permanent bill that would have granted the Congress access to uh, the Fed's books. In, in the end, in the Senate version, it was uh, Bernie Sanders took it up, and he basically proposed the same thing. But in the end, he was he kind of came around to a compromise that would that would limit the audit to a a period starting just after the crisis hit and. Uh, to the point of passage of this bill, so they so the, they won't be able to look back in time or forward in time. They're only going to be able to look at this one period between 2008 and 2010. Don't you think it's possible though that even with that little slice, that little slice into the Fed that Bernie was able to get into this bill, that some really ugly stuff might come out that'll, that'll oh. cause some changes? Yeah, no, and let's not let's not you know discount how important that was. I mean, people have been trying to get into the Fed's books for for decades. I mean, poor yeah. you know Wright Patman spent his entire career trying to crack the Fed's books, and and they were never able to do it. So the, if this thing actually gets signed into law, uh, it'll be an enormous triumph, and it'll tell us an awful lot about how the Fed does its business. 
uh, and especially in that one period after 2000, you know, after the, the collapse in September 2008, the, the amount of money that the Fed was loaning out to these companies, it will be enormously interesting and instructive to find out exactly what was going on during that period. Absolutely. The second front in your article, we're talking with Matt Taibbi, Rolling Stone, rollingstone.com. This is an article he wrote uh, a, a while back, a, a few weeks back, a month or so ago. In fact, you were on you were uh, on your honeymoon. Do I have that right? right yeah, you tried yeah, to get you on the show. Well, congratulations right. on your marriage. Uh, Thank you very much. You know, Thank you. Um, and, and anyhow, front number two: protecting consumers. Uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. This, the, you know, the, the 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 famous saying that was repeated so often: if you have a consumer protection agency that prevents your toaster from exploding, why not have a consumer protection agency that prevents your CD from exploding, basically, or your home mortgage? Uh, this uh, another example of good intentions. Uh, uh, under attack by the banking industry. Well, this is this is probably going to be the headline reform of the whole thing, of the whole effort, uh, and it, it's probably I, I would say the thing that survives the most intact out of all the different parts of this bill. Uh, there is going to be a, a CFPB or, or PA. I don't think mm-hmm. they've even decided whether it's going to be a bureau or an agency, um, but. It, you know, it's unclear exactly what uh, role they're going to have. I mean, the, one of the problems with this bill is that it sort of it doesn't mandate a whole lot of changes. It kind of puts uh, the responsibility for supervising, uh, you know, the economy in the hands of a future group of regulators, and God knows who they may, might be. I mean, right. we've already seen that regulators had enormous power throughout the in the last decade, and they just didn't do the job. Um, so. It's great that we're going to get this new agency that is going to have this mandate to to prevent abuses and prevent predatory lending, and there are there is some stuff in the bill that's going to prevent uh, people from you know lending out fraudulent mortgages. You actually have to put money down now to buy a house after this bill gets passed. But again, this is really just putting power in the hands of a bunch of regulators, and, and we don't know what exactly they're going to do. Uh, it's, so it's good, uh, but it sort of remains to be seen how effective they're going to be. Okay. And uh, you, you, you know, Chris, actually, I, this was just a brilliant cr- phrase. Chris Dodd, the influential chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, has set new standards for reptilian disingenuousness. Um, I, I have been saying on the air something that is heretical for somebody who generally supports Democrats to say, and I've had a lot of people, uh, a lot of blowback for saying it, but I've been saying from the beginning that it looks to me like Chris Dodd is positioning himself. He's got a young family. He's got, you know, a couple of young kids. He's retiring from the Senate, that he's positioning himself for a job as a as a major bankster, lobbyist, or, you know, oh, yeah. ma- member of the board of one of these big banks. Um, why did you call him reptilian? <laughs> well, look, I mean, first of all, what you what you said is absolutely, it's the perception of a lot of people in the Senate, let's put it that way. I've, I've talked to a number of staffers who've kind of whispered to me the same thing, that this is his exit strategy before he, you know, he's going to be making, you know, a million dollars. Yeah, it's the Billy Towson thing all over again. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, but, you know, the, the real thing that's interesting about the way this bill and how Chris Dodd worked is that, you know, they, they kind of convinced the, um, you know, the public that, oh, it's the Republicans who are preventing us from uh, doing this or that in the bill, whereas the reality was, you know, it was really the, the Democrats who were in control, you know, the, 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 the leadership in both the House and the Senate that were really putting the brakes on the hard reforms in the right. bill from the very beginning. And they, and they did that in a number of ways. You know, the most important in the Senate being that they would prevent this or that amendment from ever getting voted on. Uh, and that was all Chris Dodd. It wasn't the Republicans that were that were throwing the roadblock up there. That was that was the the Democratic leadership that was doing yeah. that. And and so you know they're gonna at the when this is all over they're gonna say this isn't the best bill we could have gotten, but you know we're happy with it. Just we just couldn't get any more because because of the Republican opposition. Yeah. But. Amazing, you know. amazing, and then it continues with you know too big to fail and and Blanche Lincoln's sellout and all the the, the weasel holes and that. Um, it, people have to you, you got to read this article. Uh, get over to RollingStone.com. Matt Taibbi, one of the best investigative reporters on the planet. RollingStone.com. Matt, thanks for dropping by today. Thanks a lot, Tom. Appreciate Great. it.